Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Got uh, a couple of quick things I wanted to share with you, and um, this this uh, video is actually sponsored by, if you can believe that, <laughs> um, a company called IC Station. They uh, they reached out to me some time ago. I guess they'd uh, seen a couple of my videos and wanted me to um, take a look at some of their products. So sent me an email, said you know if anything looks interesting, just let us know. I picked a couple of uh, I picked a couple of components, and uh, you know a few weeks later they showed up in my mail. So I wanted to share. These two new, these two new components with you. Uh, now, as you know, my, my focus is primarily in in the RC world and in FPV. But you know, I play around with a lot of open source hardware, and and, and Arduino and all the kinds of uh, hardware prototyping platforms. So um, at some point in time, if you're going to be playing with Ardu Arduinos, you're going to run into uh, a situation where you need uh, a USB to UART or an RS two thirty two to serial bridge. Uh, and you'll you'll have seen these referred to as things like FTDI adapters, um, or just you know basic serial adapters. Now the trouble with uh, FTDI adapters, and here's an example of one right here over on the left hand side. This is a SparkFun um, FTDI adapter, and this uses the bigger uh, TSOP package. This is um, their 5 volt version, but what I did was I cut a couple of traces and made this a 3.3 volt version. Uh, Somewhere in my prototyping work, uh, I must have crossed a pin somewhere and uh, and fried that chip because it doesn't seem to be as happy as it used to be. Uh, it used to be a bulletproof connector, but now, um, you know, I've even swapped out the FTDI chips, and I'm still running into issues with um, with the connections running. Anyway, I needed a backup, and uh, it just so happened that IC Station had uh, something called the, the CP2102 US, USB to UART bridge. It's a Scilabs chip and it's um, a USB to serial converter. Uh, this is what's notably interesting about this architecture and you know we're, we're not going to be covering the pros and cons of one versus the other because uh, you know we could talk for hours on that but what, what's interesting at least from an FPV perspective here and, and uh, even from from a prototyping perspective is that it comes with a five, where is it here? A 5 volt output as well as a 3.3 3 .3 volt output. Now you can do that as well on, on the Spark Phone, but you'd have to install a, uh, a jumper and you'd have to be pretty handy with scraping away traces to do that. Um, there is uh, the other thing about the CP2102 is that it's really cheap. We're talking about two bucks. This is, this is like a $15 board that's available, and 90% of that cost goes to uh, the licensing for the, um, for the chips. Uh, but the CP2102 is only about a uh, two or three bucks, so you could, you know, stock up on ten of these and burn them out at, at your leisure. <laughs> now there is one problem. There is one uh, thing that's going to hold this back, at least initially. But uh, I, you know, this is pretty minor. Um, the uh, the DTR pin. And I don't know if you can make it out here, but it's uh, th this corner here is pin one, and then on the top. The leftmost pin is the DTR pin, and uh, I'm not sure if you can see here, but it's actually not broken out, and uh, that's a problem for for Arduino because there's no way to send uh, a data transmit ready signal to um, to, the, to the controller to know that it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take this wire and solder that in right there, and then uh, clip in or crimp in a um, uh, so a, a header, a header pin on on the other end, and then that will break out DTR and we'll we'll be off and running again. So if you do get this, it's going to require just a tiny little bit of work. But uh, just to do that, I've got one of those things that maybe you'll only ever use like once or twice uh, as you're as you're soldering. But um, you know when when this when you need to do something as delicate as this, you need as fine point uh, a soldering tip as possible. So because this is a QFN package, a quad fat, uh, ooh, excuse me, a quad flat, no lead package. So the, uh, soldering these is pretty um, pretty challenging. So yeah, uh, you may want to consider that before you do pick up one of these. I mean, again, if if you already got an FTDI, these are great backups. But uh, yeah, I mean, to get these to the point where they're fully useful, all you'd have to do is solder in that one pin, and then you'll be off to the races. Now, the next piece I wanted to share with you was the uh, a 12 volt DC or 
excuse me, an adjustable DC-DC uh, buck regulator. And what's really interesting about this is the size of it, as well as the capacity. This uses the, um, I have to look up the data sheet, but this is the RT8272 uh, switching regulator IC. Uh, and this IC is capable of an output up to about 3 amps, which is pretty unheard of in a package this small. Usually, you know, it'd be at least two or three times the size of this. But uh, between that, the gigantic inductor, uh, the, the low ESR output capacitors and the fat diodes, uh, you, you've got up to about 3 amps of, of output that you can, of regulated output that you can uh, work with. What's also really nice about this is that it comes with a pot right here. So you can adjust the voltage up or down all the way from, I believe it's 0 to 15 volts. Uh, excuse me, like um, 3 to 15 volts. Uh, it will take an input. Uh, this chip, it will take an input of, um, I believe it's up to 24 volts. And, uh, and regulate that down to whatever you need. So the only uh, the only consideration you'd have to make though is if you are going to be using this in a tight voltage configuration, remember that this needs a little bit of overhead to work. So if you expect it to get 11 volts and you only feed it 11 and a half volts, uh, you might actually only get about 10 and a half or 10.7. You'll have to hook up your multimeter to, to this to, to check to see. Now one other thing that I did want to point out about this is that uh, there are different configurations of this uh, this board but that use this chip, the RTA272, and they come with uh, two sets of pins, which is really helpful because you can output uh, 12 volts to uh, a camera, to a 12 volt camera, as well as 12 volts to um, a video transmitter. And these are really, really nice. The I, I've seen a few power distribution solutions, you know, they're in the 70 and $80 range, but honestly, you hook this up to your battery taps in and out, and um, you get two sets of leads going to your to your video transmitter and your uh, and your camera and your you're going to be off to the races with a really small package. Um, as far as uh, switching noise, uh, the data sheet says that the switching frequency is 1.2 megahertz. So <laughs> I don't see this uh, I don't see this uh, spewing any any RF um, any spurious RF noise in in any of the control bands that we work with. But I'll be sure to do an RF scan and post the results of that. So these, these are two components that are going to be going uh, into the build that I'm working on right now. The CP2102 is, what I'll, is one of the tools that I'll be using to flash the uh, open LRS receivers and transmitters. And then this uh, regulator is what I'm going to use to power the entire video system, this tiny little regulator. So that's about it. Uh, just like I said, just a quick, uh, just a quick overview. I'm going to put this on the uh, under the microscope and uh, see if I can get those pins soldered in properly, and um, yeah, see if I can keep going. Thanks for watching, and uh, again, thanks to IC Station for for sending these along. Uh, I'm sure they'll be hugely useful once I can get them modded up the, the way that I like. All right, take care.